On another matter in your area of responsibility, there are a thousand Vietnamese farm labourers coming into the country by the end of this year under the coalition's former ag visa. Uh, you've, you're going to honour it, honour this deal because the memorandum of understanding was signed with Vietnam before the election, so you're going to honour that deal. But then that's it. No, there's no more for the ag visa when it comes to the, the Southeast Asia and the region. I spoke to Anne Webster, the member for Mali, this morning. She's saying, why not? Why don't you do both? Why don't you have the Palm, the Pacific Labor Mobility Program, and the ag visa? She says there's room for both in our ag sector. Yeah, well, we saw a lot of statements from National Party members before the election about how they were going to bring in an ag visa and that was going to fix agricultural workforce shortages. The harsh cold reality is that not a single worker came in on those agriculture visas before the change of government. Uh, we have said that we would honour the agreement that the former government reached with the government of Vietnam, uh, and that's why last week the Prime Minister confirmed that we will proceed with a 1,000 Vietnamese workers coming into Australia to work on our farms. That's obviously good for our farmers, but it's also important in terms of knowledge transfer to farmers back in Vietnam when they go home. Um, but our government has made clear that our priority when it comes to filling those workforce gaps is building up the Pacific Labor Scheme, which we have done. We're now actually bringing in record numbers of Pacific labourers to work on our farms and our meat processing sheds more than ever before. Um, but equally, what we're also doing is investing in locals. Uh, you will have heard a lot about the fee-free TAFE measure that our government has taken to reduce the costs of training. There are over 10,000 agriculture courses that have been filled through those fee-free TAFE places, providing locals with the kind of skills that our farmers need as well. Um, so we're confident that between those and other measures, we can meet the needs of our agriculture workforce. But, but clearly, strengthening our relationship with the Pacific is the number one goal that we have through this program. It's obviously important for diplomacy, for our security relationship with the Pacific, but it's also a really important income source for our Pacific neighbours too. You're the Minister for Agriculture, but also uh, have responsibility for emergency management. I, I would be remiss of me if I don't ask you about this heat wave we're seeing in Melbourne right now, uh, extraordinary temperatures for this time of the year. What's the sort of reaction and, and impact have, has that had in, in Melbourne over the last few days, over 38 degrees? Yeah, I know it's been a really hot long weekend uh, for Victoria uh, and my thoughts go out to everyone who's been suffering under that. Uh, the advice that I've got is that we are expecting those temperatures to ease tomorrow and they've already begun easing in some of the other southern parts of the country. But it's a real reminder that heat waves actually can be the biggest killer of Australians of any form of uh, uh, climate related issues. Uh, we do, of course, worry a lot about bushfires, floods, cyclones, and rightly so, but heat waves actually kill more Australians every year than any of those events. So today is a really good day to make sure that you're looking out for your neighbour, particularly vulnerable people, the elderly, people with disabilities. Just check in on them, make sure they're OK. Uh, offer them some cool spaces in your own home if you've got them. Uh, and anyone who doesn't have those options, it's a good day to get down to the local council pool to cool off. Indeed, it sure is. Murray Watt, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it.